Hello, this is going to be a quick tutorial about how to retopologize a clothing mesh that comes from Marvelous Designer within ZBrush and Blender in a very clean and nice way. The idea is to morph the mesh into UV space, then do a retopology based on that, and then morph it back into 3D space. I found a tutorial on how to do this in uh, Maya, but it seems no one has done the same workflow for Blender yet, so I thought I'd make this video about it. Uh, the reason why we want to morph this into UV space, then do the retopo, and then morph that back into the actual mesh is, if we do it right away on this mesh, uh, it's just not as clean, you know, like these areas are kind of weird maybe a couple poles too many. And um, if you have a mesh that has more folds than this, it just gets a lot more finicky, even if you enable keep groups and all that stuff. So I prefer to do the retopo in UV space. When you start out, make sure you just have a single sided mesh, no thickness, no buttons, no anything. I think in Marvelous Designer, when you export it, you have to enable thin and uh, unweld everything so that you have all these individual meshes here. And then we export this to Blender to morph this into UV space. Um, shirt, not remeshed blender there it is and at this point if there's anything wrong with the UVs you can fix it in here I guess we could pack these again so that they're a bit filled out a bit better leave a bit of space Cool. So now let's morph this into UV space. To do that, you need an add-on called Text Tools. I'll link in the description. Very useful for UV mapping, but also if you right-click, you could click this function here called Create UV Mesh, which does exactly that. It makes a copy of the original mesh with a shape key transforms it into UV space. So now we want to retopo this. We could do this in Blender, the quad remesh. I found Z remesher is better though. So let's export that again. Call it UV mesh. Uh, I'm gonna bring that back into ZBrush. Now, here it is. And we could have done this in ZBrush with the UV Master. UV Master has a flatten function. Um, I did that before and it flipped the whole thing on the Y axis and the scaling and the offset was weird. So that's why I chose to do it in Blender. It's zero measure. And there you go. We have a topology. Nice and usable. Can uh, play around with the values a bit on something that's you know kind of symmetrical like this. Bring that back into Blender. So call it UV mesh. UV meshed. Just back into Blender. Lines up perfectly. By the way, I'm using a drag and drop add on here so that I can just drag and drop things into Blender. So now we have both the uh, original and the zero meshed version in Blender. And we want to wrap the zero meshed version to the original version so we can morph it back into 3D space. The way we do that is with a modifier called surface deform. 
as a target, we choose the original mesh. And then we hit bind. And now if we select the original one, we can hide it. And then lower the shape key. Voila, we have the original mesh. And if we want, we can, you know, keep going back and change some things. I don't know, maybe we want to have more, more loops in here on the sleeves. Maybe we want a loop in the middle here on this one or here. Actually, definitely here, I think. On the inner side of a collar. Don't forget to unbind and then rebind the surface deform. Select the original mesh and then and move back. Yeah. So now we have something that's a bit more clean than what ZBrush would give us. Again, this is way more obvious for pleated skirts, pants, and other kinds of clothing that have a lot of overlapping pieces and folds. The results here are just much cleaner. One more trick I want to show you is um, you can put in a subdivision modifier in front of the surface deform. Say we add two subdivisions. Got to make sure to keep the boundaries though. So I'll just select these, select everything, shift four and put the crease value all the way up that way the borders they put they don't smooth out with all the rest i'll activate the surface deform again unbind and bind again now this back i've retained some more detail of the original mesh and now we can put this back the zbrush Final remeshed shirt. Uh, and here we have our shirt. And now, because we had a subdivision modifier before we wrapped it to the original mesh, we can reconstruct our subdivisions and we have retained a bit of detail. And now we can smooth that out and make it look nice. And then, you know, eventually what we could do is um, we can add some thickness to it. There's some script that I use for this, the extrude keep, keep subdiv. Probably works. Yeah, there you go. So what it does is it adds thickness, but then it also keeps the subdivisions. Um, obviously this needs some love, but that is the basic idea of this workflow. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. So yeah, just want to make a quick video about that. Obviously, once you have it in Blender, you could also do a retopology by hand, but I just prefer to do it with zero measure. As you can see, it gives you good enough results to continue detail sculpting on this. All right, take care.